We're obviously very informal here. This is going to be one of my most uh, unusual to date interviews. I happen to have a very, very dear, sweet, wonderful friend, Jose Nidio. I say that with a horrible French bing, bing to it, so how would you pronounce your last name? What's the actual French pronunciation? Nadu. 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 Yes. You seem like you have a little L on the end there. The <laughs> French L. Jose. We we just call her Jose. <laughs> there we go. Jose this week. We have our wine, we have everything. Cheers. 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 We're not pretending we don't have microphones or wine or anything else. I nothing has been prepared to do this interview, which is kinda cool. And I'll tell you why. I'm gonna speak before you do here. <laughs> I'll give everybody a little predecessor to what we're gonna do. This is very extemporaneous because, and it just worked out that way. My lovely wife, Devin, who is handling the camera right now, we're doing a one camera shoot, which I've never been done before on this show. And Jose paints very extemporaneously, very quickly, and it's all a feeling of the moment. She will be painting. I'll give you some links and things to look at this further in detail. But Jose will go on stage by herself with a canvas, usually a huge canvas, and she'll have a full-on philharmonic orchestra playing live for the audience as she actually starts and completes a whole painting. And how long would it take? What's in between one it, and one? It really depends. I mean, you know, I've done from uh, painting live with Jan Warwick in three minutes to to the song to Do You Know the Way to San Jose, which is kind of interesting because my name is Jose. Maybe that's why they <laughs> picked that one. Okay. Uh, to doing a symphony, which is so the magnitude of the spirit of hearing the violin and the it, it's such a, very strong that that uh, I, I can do. It all depends. I mean. My my background was that when I studied in school, we the teacher would teach us in drawing that you had to cover the at least corners of the canvas within seconds. So I think that training brought me to what I can do today. And instead of just painting by myself in my studio, because as you know, as a painter or as a creator, a musician, you spend a lot of time alone in your studio. You have your band, and you know you've got a group. I'm by myself. So I just wanted to share it with the world. And uh, so to answer your question, uh, in an hour or two paintings in 20 minutes, I mean eight feet by eight feet. And it's a lot of energy that comes from the music and what I feel and visualize to channel it through and then... You said before you even start, you want to taste or hear or feel something and you really suss out your whole environment that you're working with so you can get the inspiration to do whatever's gonna come through you. Correct. And right. you, you do these amazing paintings in such a short amount of time. That's what I think is unique to you, is that ability to do it. Most artists would want the time to layer, to take the time to choose, and you're just going on instinct of the moment and this amazing stuff comes out. Jose's uh, horse paintings, I think, are probably one of my favorites. You have these right. sort of ethereal or powerful images of horses that come through, and I'm I'm blown away. I've always wanted to draw or paint or something, and I've never really taken the time to cultivate that. Right. So I totally admire that ability you have. Just bam, and you seem like the most spontaneous. Yes. Most. You just right. everything's spontaneous right. for you. Right. How cool is that? It's it's well, it's a fact of life. I think every moment is the moment. So. How can you prepare for something like that? I, you know, unless you rehearse, and I don't know that, because then you lose the momentum of being in the moment, and it's so much better just to be. Yeah. And if you have the talent within, or you know you can channel it, channel it through, then there's no, it's much more fun than it's spontaneous. I also want to get to the aspect that you do so much for charity. You just you donate a lot of your talent and your services and your paintings to charity. And that's part of your process of giving back, of making it work, of spreading the 
the energy, I guess. So. Right, right. But you do so much of it, I think most people would be would have to be humbled, if not uh, shamed, that they don't do as much as well. Well, I, I just really enjoy it because at first hand it's a great medium, the charities, first of all, to give back. Secondly, to be able to share what I do. Um, it's so different. I mean, there are some other painters out there, but mine is not calculated at all. I get on stage, I need to feel, channel it through, and then whatever at that moment is what I will paint. I may have an image prior in my head, or an, uh, an image close to me. You, know, you never know if I need it, or even sometime I will use that. But apart from that, I mean, it's just so much fun to... In a stroke, you can create a painting. Look at Picasso, look at Matisse. I mean, I should have painted you right now. Right here. Well, so, in a way, I'm painting you right now, aren't I? Yes. I'm so delighted to be here, Ron. I'm I so love glad you. you could join us. <laughs> Thank this you. was a sort of an extemporaneous, you're in town, let's just do this. And right. then we thought, well, let's Great just time. film a little Ron's Garage, because I've been telling her about this for the last couple of years. And she goes, I really want to do your show. You're th so right, let's, right. And I'm always so technical, I'll admit, I'm, I'm too technical, I want to get it right, I want to have the two cameras and the audio just right, editing just right, and Devin's been encouraging me to just, let's just let it fly, just put it out there, let's go extemporaneous, you know, one camera. We were even thinking of streaming this live, not oh, what yeah. we were thinking of doing, right. which you're used to, you're just streaming live and you can paint a whole art collection. I'll do it next time. <laughs> But this is so cool. This is actually kind of cool because she has such a wonderful energy. You are the, you are the, sort of embodiment of that creative spirit that I've always loved and I admire. And I'm going to say less than a handful of people I've known in my life who actually do that kind of art in that way. Right. And you are the other one. Yeah. One of two people in my life. But you're kind of, for my world in the music, you're like the premier jazz musician Sweet. who's able to create on the spot and improvise whatever it is, whatever it's thrown in, it's just, it comes out of your soul. Right, right. Cool. right. Tell, I know I'm going to turn people on to a lot of your links and things after right. the fact. We'll get them turned on to that. But I, just hearing it from you, you are from... Montreal. Montreal originally. Originally, yes. And you have traveled and lived all around the world, especially Many places. in France. <laughs> right. You were able to, one cool thing is you were able to be in whose garden and whose house painting when you were... Uh, Claude Monet's garden. I, it was a visit of a day that lasted 10 years. She went to Monet's garden for a day, and I'm staying for 10 years right. and being able to paint in his actual garden. Right? Correct, correct. Okay. I, was, I became the protege of the curator after him seeing my work. And, instantly took a liking to my work because he himself was a painter um, but uh, unfortunately he could not use some of his paintings but once he became curator of Chateau de Versailles because he didn't want people to think he was using his contacts in order to sell paintings so when he met me he was totally taken by the fact of my passion and also the fact that I was actually doing it yeah. as you know you know as an artist it takes a lot of balls and guts, and for me, it's no different if you're a fashion designer or a musician. Or you just gotta have a goal and do it. Go with the flow and do you it. Gotta do it. Right. It's like a if right. you want to be a writer, you want to be an artist, just do it. Right. Paint. Right. Make music. Right. Do whatever it is you want to do. Just do it. That's what makes you. Okay. Enough preaching. <laughs> I love having her here. This is very cool. This is so wonderful. This, it's like I'm reveling. Yeah, whatever whatever camera stuff happens, it's like extemporaneous in the moment. The camera drops off the little thing, so there we go. Who cares? Who cares? Oh, there you go. I love having you here. So Thank you. Tell from when, just a quick little overview. Mm -hmm. I'll let people go, and you. I'm sure there's a, I know there's a lot of information on the internet about you. She's so prolific. She's like Picasso prolific. And I want people to know a little of how you were raised to come to this point. You were I, I, raised I always as had, an artist? No, well, yes. My parents were always very supportive. I mean, from the age of 9 or 13, I was taking my private lessons of 
I had to ask my parents' permission in order to paint the nude by the age of like nine or 13. I don't even remember anymore. You were painting in the nude? No, yeah, right. <laughs> of Probably. course you had to ask their permission. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So they would they would hire would they actually hire a model for you? No, or? no. I, I went to a special school, but, oh, okay. and it was all 40 years old. And then I'm just 13 or nine years old. I think yeah. I was 13 because I was in Ottawa then, which is the capital of Canada. Uh, I'm from Montreal, but I lived in Ottawa, and my father uh, was the master of the mint in Canada. Um, so I was always, and my mother was the head of a corporation of the army surplus. So uh, I was. It was always a, an environment that was very creative. And I feel very blessed, and I hope that the whole world, that whoever has children, please promote them, help do anything, just to follow their, your dream. Because yeah. there are opportunities every day, and it's just for one to believe in what they're doing. So, I mean, I have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, I'm just living. But your parents believed enough in you Correct. to let you achieve right. that, to go to yes. that school at that age. At that age, very young. But you were passionate about wanting to go there. Correct. Yes, listen, I, I did. I did make it to the passion. school. I did make it to you the school. You did make it there. Yeah, exactly. Even with the new stuff. <laughs> exactly. You must have had a hell of a lesson in uh, <laughs> like sex education, right? <laughs> Instantly. <laughs> funny. Yeah. So that was that was one part, and then I, I ended up going to camps or things like that, but very high end, like in the field of the arts. And then next thing you know is I end up in France. Uh, well, actually, there was a workshop in uh, Western Canada, MLA, which is very prominent in the art world. From gathers people from around the world. And Clarence Greenberg, who came from New York, would go to the workshop and select artists at the end of his life. Unfortunately, we crossed paths. We did not cross paths because he passed away before I went there. But MLA is still a very prominent, important uh, workshop. Um, so then after that, I wanted to really go on my own, and I, of course, wanted to go to the source. Again, about the taste in the wine, the feeling. I'm just going to, yes. as we're speaking, adjusting the sound stuff. So, um, France was like, just so wonderful. I mean, arriving in Manes Garden and more importantly meeting the people behind it that brought it back to life. I mean, it's one of the most visited sites in the world, as far as the garden. And in fact, it's more visited in the paintings themselves of Claude Monet. Yeah. So they provided me with, actually, Gérald Van de Kamp, who's the curator, um, had a studio on the grounds. And sure enough, I had a studio for a period of 10 years. Let me, uh, let me talk about something that's probably kind of Because I know how it is to talk about your art. You don't really want to talk about your art, at least I don't. I'll let people just experience it. Uh, discover it. Just look at it. Don't I don't need to explain my art to you. Right. So I would never have a painting of yours and say, Jose, uh, explain what what what, is your, what do you mean by this? Or, no, no, don't do that to an artist. But what I would like to do is maybe have you say a little of what goes through you when you are actually in the world. A lot of energy. A lot of energy. Just... A lot of uh, wonderful energy. I mean, it's just, it's, I don't paint, I don't think. I think prior. And then the moment I touch the canvas, I mean, within three strokes it could be done. It's so, I mean, it's so there. I mean. When you, do you do any kind of meditation? Any, you just sort of center yourself and just feel like we said before, everything, you touch something, you taste something, you do something that's related to the environment you're in, and then you just let it flow, right? Right, right. Has, and I don't want to think too much, because no, it's really something so yeah. natural that, I mean, I do take a moment, and then I just go. It's not really a thinking sort of medium, is No, it? no, you the can't. Feeling. The moment you start thinking of, that's not me. <laughs> Have you ever... <laughs> as I have in my fields. Have you ever gotten up there and nothing's going on? I'm not feeling anything. No energy's coming. I, no. You're, and where you just had, no, you, you no. always have that channel. Of course. Okay. Because you connect with the band or the group, you know, whoever, whatever I've decided to do. 
I can't wait to create it, so I don't even go there. So you never had that that no. sort of not yet. stall. <laughs> Knock or, on wood. <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, that's great. I, right. I right. know of different artists that have a, a block of some sort, so painting or writing. Or no, music there's no block. I mean, I'm just thinking all the time. This is about the period I have. Like, for instance, I got up on stage one time in Australia, and I didn't know it until I stepped up to the mic for a major performance there, that my voice was gone. Right. It was gone. That's not good. I didn't know that until it happened. And I went, <laughs> where's my voice? And it just went away. And I knew I had an hour and a half of performance to do. So how did you do it? It was like the worst nightmare of my life. It really was because I did not expect it. Of course, that was the night when all the press was going to be there and all this stuff. And I, I just had to force my way through it. Right. So I'm just curious if you. And probably ever, nobody even noticed. They had to have noticed because it wasn't a casual thing. Right. If you're singing in front of people and you have no voice. Right. That's not it's good. It's like laryngitis, like the extreme laryngitis. Where right. There's nothing there. I had to literally scream my way through it. Wow. And it was one of those things where I kept going, please let me wake up from this. Right. Please let me wake up. This has got to be a nightmare. This is like the worst nightmare. And let did me you, wake up. Did you? I never woke up from it. I had to just suck it up and go for it. Right. And I lived through it. But god damn. Right. It was horrendous. Right. It was horrendous from a standpoint of I really wanted to do well. Right. I wanted to do well. It was probably one of the worst I'd ever done for me. Right. Right? right. So I was curious if you had ever got up and just nothing was coming to me. Uh, I don't know what to do. You, no. you, you, you seem real focused when you're gonna. You know it's gonna happen one way or the other. Right. Right. You don't know what the outcome is gonna be, but you know right. it's gonna happen. No, on the contrary, I'm dying to have even more canvases up there. Like just create maybe six or seven of them. <laughs> And then it's done. There's so much that how needs many, to come many, out of me. <laughs> how many canvases in your house? You, you told me. You know. I, maybe we don't want to promote that one, but a lot. A lot. <laughs> in good ways, by the way. But yes. And you have, but it's because you are prolific. Correct. And you have saved them. Correct. Uh, a lot of artists are, are, you're giving a massive amount away. I know you have, and I know you Through the charities, to do that. right. But you are prolific to the point of where you have been able to collect a lot of your artwork and you have them on. It's always good for an artist to keep either one or two painting of a series. That's, that's a very important that With mine, I guess it would be like the Paris with the windows and the, the, bit of the, the windows of the world, uh, the question, the Paris cafes, uh, portraits right now. I just painted King George the Fifth on his yacht. Olympians. I mean, I, I just love covering whatever's going on, I guess. Let's go back to the Britannia. Yes. You, you, that ship from King George right. was sunk after he died because he requested it to be so. Correct, yes. He wanted the ship uh, destroyed or whatever just uh, because it was his personal ship. Yes. And so after he died, they destroyed the ship and then somebody, years later, decided yes. to remake the ship verbatim in every detail. Correct. Kind of like resurrecting the Titanic. And they did. They made this beautiful, how big is the yacht? Is I'm not, I, I forget. I think it's a hundred and something feet, definitely. I, but So uh, they remade it. It's the tallest mass, actually. Really? Yes. They remade it, and so you were asked... As to do this painting, uh, which I painted King George V, and we're using the image to actually brand the project, uh, which they will host over 80 to 100 charities on the yacht a year out of London. So the yacht has been made again for all these charity uh, purposes, which right. is so cool. Right. I, right. I, I and admire... it's a great group. I want you to meet them. Okay. They're, they're a great group. I'd love to. Yes. I, I so and then my son's you. roommate won gold in the Olympics. Yes. <laughs> her sons, <laughs> we were talking about this earlier, her sons are both uh, Olympic skiers and snowboarders and uh, they both, <laughs> as Olympians and avid skiers will do, they've had their share of accidents and injuries right. and one of her sons was in a cast like this 
because he broke uh, both of his arms, probably, right? The wrist, yes. And so he was out like this, and the other one, the other one, the same day, went down the hill, and in front of Sean White, I think. It, yeah, I'm sure it was Sean White. And fell, and his wrist was hanging down. It was horrible, but he held on to his own wrist and snowboarded down the hill to get treatment for his wrist, holding his wrist to keep it from dropping off his hand. And, that, and that's true. That's exactly, you described it perfectly. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> but 40, happy. Feet, 40 feet in the air and then you land and then it's amazing that he was able to just snowboard down to the clinic. I mean, he was trying to do an impressive flip, like flip right? In front of uh, Sean White. I don't know if he did the flip. I just know he went up and everything. He went up. Oh, God. <laughs> so it's very Boys, cool. It's right? very cool because he, they were a big force for me when I painted the Olympians like Sage and, and uh, Sage and Joss. They were the two gold medalists and soap star. Um, and friends, you know, of my kids. And, and they were, one lives on my street, the other one is my son's roommate. Uh, I live in Park City, Utah. So. Um, that. They would come to the studio, to my house, and they'd go, Mom, you know, the pole, or actually, you know, the skiers should be a little bit more like that. And then I go, oh, you're so right. So it was so cool to work on a project with my kids so that I could learn more, and also they were part of it, and it was awesome. See, that's the cool thing about Jose, is most people would have gone, no, the ski doesn't have to be like that. This is the way I wanted it as an artist to be. She goes, oh, you're so right. Cool, okay, I'll make it that way. I didn't That's even realize, I went to the boys' house, I and that. I see these ski poles, and they're about this tall. And yeah. I go, whose poles are those? They go, well, they're Joss's poles. I go, and Chris, the other roommate, and I go, oh my god, they're so short. And, and my son described to me that they need it shorter so they can do the flip easier. I didn't even know that. Yeah. But it's important to know that. A long that pole if I'm would decapitate paint. somebody on the right, flip. Right, exactly. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> what do you, what, I mean, I know you have constant charities planned, you're always uh, doing things. One cool thing is you were about to get your citizenship, Correct. You know, which you've spent many years achieving. And, right, right. Uh, you have to be a very sort of special, uh, they choose you based on the fact of what you do specific to something. And she is basically the only person who can do what she does. Well, I'm not sure if that was really the way. I think it's more to be they an outstanding... They look at you very special. Yes, you have to be an outstanding achiever in the field of the arts. Well, that's the way that I was accepted. So for me, okay. just that is such an honor yeah. and uh, a great achievement that that's the way I uh, was received in this country. So, so this will allow you to go back to Europe now correct. and, and yeah. pursue all the things you've been missing over there. See my eyes lit up? Yeah. <laughs> Go back to your Monet's garden. No, well, I've, I've been there, done that. That's done. I, and now it's time to move on. This other project, nice thing with the K1 Britannia, is something fun. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of great things that I can do uh, back in Europe. Personally, my main mission really is to bring Europe and the culture back here in America. That's really uh, as an ambassador of the arts. We need. Right. Just to bring, as you know, you spent a lot of time in Italy with Devin and, yeah. you know, doing everything. You did Dancing with the Stars in Italy. I mean, it's so cool. Speaking of culture. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important to bring it back here and to share it with the public and educate people and, and give them inspiration to create and do and believe and just paint, paint, paint and put things in charities. And if I can, if I can <coughs> impose on you to have one story that you've told me in a nutshell. Uh, I'm very blessed to, to have heard the story where you met and got a personal little concert oh. with just the two of them, with uh, a very dear George Harrison, who obviously is a huge influence on me and my career were able to meet him and just give an overview of what happened because I think people were looking for Right. No idea. <laughs> yes. Um, in 2000, I met him. I was a guest at uh, Guy La Liberté, the founder of Cirque du Soleil. Um, and uh, actually, I arrived at the farm pit and, and I met George. Um, from afar, there was someone sitting in Scottish and I said, George, who is that? 
and I think he was surprised that a fan or somebody would be with him and be interested more in the music than actually going, hey, great to meet you. I mean, I did say that, but so, uh, of course, uh, I asked him um, three times, basically, who is that? <laughs> and he kept saying. Uh, uh, excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> three times. And finally, he said that was his best friend, Norbert Hogg, the CEO of Mercedes Benz. And he, and he was singing in Scottish, and that's when he asked me if you care to join us, which I did, and he was delightful. He was, uh, it was a very creative uh, uh, encounter on both fronts. Uh, he sang to me for four hours. With, actually, I was not, we were not just four the two hours. of us. Yeah, four hours. Four hours, George Harrison sang to Jose personally. And it wasn't in front of a group of people. It was in a little back section by themselves. And he just decided this was his audience right here. Right. And you sang for four hours. Four hours. I tried to walk away twice. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of overwhelming, seriously. Yeah. So, and he was with Norbert <laughs> Hogg, and he was with Norbert Hogg, and also uh, Mary And Alien. he kept doing this. No, no. So. It, no, he, yes, he, he grabbed my he hand. Grab your hand and pull right. you back down. Right. There's more. Right, right. <laughs> basically, oh basically. So, it, I was so touched, and really, I think that when you meet like you as well, you know, I'm sure tomorrow you will create something even bigger because it's we all feed from each other. Again, it goes back to the charity or it's about the creative process. And, you know, I adore you. I mean, the first time I met you, I mean, I felt totally in love with you, like any of your fans probably. But you are even bigger than what you have created. And I'm so, and you've created a lot of things. You really have. And you've touched a lot of souls. I mean, baby, come back for three years, top chart. Correct? Well, that's not about me. Baby, come back. It's not about me. This is about you. Thanks. <laughs> so I'm back. <laughs> you are back. There you We're go. All very Thanks happy to your beautiful this. wife and you. I will uh, end this by, I'll put all the links and stuff for Jose up so you can further enhance your knowledge of her. Please look at them. They're amazing. Watch some of her live one-of-a-kind performances that she did. I call it a performance, but it's a... Yeah, it's always a tough an experience. one. Right. It's an experience. Right, right, right. You're experiencing it. Right. But you're getting this all with the cars, with the dogs, with the camera drop, everything that happens, it's just as it is. So I'm trying to relax and be more extemporaneous in the way we do this, which has been fun. Thank you so it's much. fun thanks to you. Thank you. See, so you're influencing me now. Good, good. And as you are with me, <laughs> I adore you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you for doing this. Oh my God. Are you kidding? <laughs> was it? Was it? Was it semi-painless? Yes, it was fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I adore you. Semi-painless. I love you. Too. Mm -hmm. Love you too. God bless you. God bless you. You're such a wonderful creative force that inspires everybody around you. I. Only hope that people tap into that and are inspired as I have been by you. Very sweet, and, and I as well, because I really believe that you know, if you've got a kid at home or uh, whoever, just paint, just do whatever your passion is. And the world will come to you. It's definitely come to you. It's definitely come to you because you made it that way. Thank you. Bless you. Now he's got the <laughs> <laughs> oh, love child, right? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I remember when Tina cool. first showed me your your rose garden. You have to understand, I've lived in a beautiful garden before. Oh, yeah. Look at these roses. Look what you guys have. How beautiful is that? Look at the colors.